Hi guys, welcome back to Healthy and Delicious. My name is Michaela. I'm a chef and nutritionist, and I'm here with my co-host, Chef Lionel. So what are we going to be doing today, Lionel? So today I'm very excited. It's all about the farmer market. And so farmer market is something very personal to me because I used to go in the farmer market when I was kids with my mom so many times. And just having people screaming about those vegetables. <laughs> so in France, they're like, oh, il est beau le melon, 10 francs le melon. Oh, so I'm I trying remember it's like very, very e exciting for me. I loved growing up in Tahoe. It was great because we had a farmer's market right on the lake. It was in this little small parking lot right next to a park. And so you're buying all your fruits and vegetables and you're right next to the lake. So it was super pretty. So I still go. I love my farmer's markets every weekend. Try and go and get everything that I can because it's super fresh, right? So yeah. the best flavor is also better, more nutritious because it's going to be fresher, right? Oh, some of those vegetables you find in the farmer market, you won't find anywhere else. Like the so supermarket, uh, they're so pale compared to the farmer market. It's yeah, because so you know that they color. picked it like yesterday, right? And they bring it, they bring it straight to you where if it's at the supermarket, it might take them a few more days and be in a truck for a few days. Yeah. So it's really good to have the farmer market uh, nearby. So usually they're on Sunday, Saturday and yep. everywhere in the Bay Area. And I'm encouraging you to go there with your kids and to uh, make them pick up vegetable. Yeah, it's more fun. There's lots of research behind that, too, actually, is that yeah. if you let kids choose which vegetables they want, they're more likely to eat them. And you can also give them lots of fun names. That's another good one. That's true. So how was your week this week? I didn't see you for like a week. It was great. I went to my farmer's market, um, worked a lot, busy, but it was good. How about your week? Very good, very good. I go for a little run this morning as you're oh, encouraging me to. I feel very, very good, but I'm very <laughs> hungry. I didn't have time to have breakfast. Well, perfect. So I'm starving right now. All right, so I'm going to cook you something. You cooked me a little something from France last That's time. Right. So I'm going to make you a deconstructed raspberry rhubarb crumble. Nice. So, of course, I took a crumble can be something that's almost like a dessert where it's very sugary you know, with, you know, the fruit underneath and then the topping you know usually has I'm, lots I'm of butter. And sugar, right? I know. So <laughs> I'm going to put a little bit of sugar in there for you, yes. but it's going to be a sugar that I like a little bit better. So what okay. we're going to do is you have your pan there and we could get that hot and I'm going to have you pour in our ghee here and we're okay. going to get that melted and nice and warm. So if you don't know what ghee is, it's clarified butter. So yep. it doesn't have none of that dairy milk product yet. So exactly. it doesn't burn in there. So you can reach very high And I actually like ghee. that. I'm going to go ahead and start chopping my rhubarb here. But I like the ghee without the milk solids because milk tends to make me break out, get acne, which I, of course, don't want. So I find that with a lot of different people is that it will make them break out. So this still, I can enjoy that butter flavor. All right, so I'm going to have you add our rhubarb in. Okay. And some people might not know what rhubarb is. So it looks a little bit like celery, but it's, it has this pink color to it, right? And so I like to describe the flavor as kind of, it has kind of a celery texture, except for when you cook it, then it breaks down, has this kind of tart flavor, just like apples. Yeah, they usually so combine them with it. berries, and they are one of those uh, vegetable or fruit. I don't even know, is it a fruit or vegetable? It's technically a vegetable because it's very fibrous, kind of like celery, but in America we kind of tend to categorize it in the fruit department since we mix it with fruit so much. But it does have fiber, which is really great. You know, I'm trying to sneak vegetables into oh, your breakfast here. Oh, that's what it is. <laughs> but I'm going to give you some sweetness. We're going to add in some raspberries. raspberries. Raspberries are also pretty low in sugar for a fruit. They're one of the lower sugar fruits, so I love them. And they give you a lot of nice flavor in there Lots with the little nice seeds flavor. and yep, all exactly. that stuff. So the rhubarb, my mom used to make a rhubarb pie when I was kids. Oh, really? So we have a little bit of rhubarb in the garden, and they mm -hmm. come with huge leaves. Yeah. And you have to tear apart the leaves. Now, when I was kids, it made me feel like a little bit like a dinosaur or lettuce or something. You know, mm -hmm. Something a dinosaur would eat. Yeah. And, but um, you're actually supposed to not eat the leaves of rhubarb. I think they're, they yeah, they're not good. Yeah, we peel the leaves yeah. away and we eat only So in the, the supermarket, roots. you'll never see it with the leaves on it. That's so. true. All right, I'm going to start making our crumble topping, which is going to be pretty simple today. Okay. But before I do, I'll have you add in the sugar in here so it can start caramelizing. So this is not my typical sugar. No. So what do you think it is? Well, it's, it tastes like brown sugar. It smells like brown sugar. But it's not brown sugar. It's actually coconut sugar. Mm. So I love coconut sugar. It has a little bit more minerals in it. So if I you're like going to choose a sugar, it's, it's going to be your next best bet. It's still a sugar. It's still, you know, something sweet. But I know you like your sweet. So I'm going to give you a I little sugar sweet. upgrade. Sugar you got to have some deliciousness there, That's right. people. Had to please, yeah. That's why we do that together, right? So <laughs> we don't right. finish eating two cucumber. It's a, it's a compromise here. <laughs> so I'm going to start on our crumble. And I'm going to kind of make this crumble a little bit healthier, but really simple. So this is almost like a granola in a sense. So I'm going to start with some pecans and then a little bit of coconut shavings. So for some crunch here. Pecan pie, pecan pie, pecan pie. <laughs> <laughs> 
And then I'm just going to give this, uh, give our little crumble here, a little bit of that coconut sugar on top too. Nice. Just tiny little bit of sweetness. And then a drizzle of coconut oil. Oh, that's going to be nice and exotic, all those nuts yeah. with the oil and the coconut sugar. And then I'm actually going to add in some pistachios at the end, but I like them to stay nice and green. So I'm going to add them after we bake this so that they don't lose that bright green color. Oh, you know what? I'm going to add a little pinch of salt. Into yeah, that would be great. The, um, it's always okay, will you good add a pinch add of salt, salt to this one too? Yeah. Because if you think about it, yeah, it balances it up. Peanut butter and jelly. The only way it works out so well is because of the sugar and the salt that mix. Exactly. I think this. All right, so I'm going to put this into the oven at 350 for about 10 minutes, just until the coconut is nice and lightly golden, not too brown. So we're going to put that in. All right, so Perfect. how's that smelling over there? It's compoting. So since that does take a little bit to cook down, I went ahead and cooked a little bit in advance so that we have some ready to go. So how long that will take to cook completely? It takes only about 15 minutes, so not too long. This is something you could really throw together pretty quickly. But it does take a little bit of time. And then how long can you keep that? Uh, once you could you probably it? keep it, um, I would say, seven days is the general rule for leftovers in the fridge. But what I, could, I would do is make a big batch. You could freeze some, so then you have some ready to go. Cool. So I am going to go ahead and give our base here. So usually a crumble is served with like ice cream or something, right? I was well, thinking you know about me. ice cream. <laughs> It'd be good, but you know me with my dairy. I want to do something yeah. a little bit healthier, but also dairy-free. So I have some yogurt here, but it's actually made from almond milk. Oh. So it's still dairy-free. You can still get that kind of creaminess. So I'm going to add that in at the base. So we get nice creaminess. It has some protein. And when I'm buying yogurts, I always want it to be unsweetened if you can find it so that there isn't any added in sugar. We already have, you know, our little tiny bits in these ones. So we don't want any, any extra in our yogurt. And you know what I like about that too? Uh, when you go in Europe, they actually don't sweet it and salt everything. Yeah. They kind of like making layers. You yeah, can allow taste you to better the acidity of each the flavors, ingredients. Exactly. Much better, yeah. So now I'm going to spoon our mixture here that we have in our pot. It's just been done for a little bit. Spoon it in here. It's going to be nice and creamy, a little bit of tartness. That's nice. It's looking beautiful. You know what? I forgot a little something in there, but it's not too late for that one because it went ah. in here. The orange. Oh, orange. So I want to give it a little bit of citrus. Ooh, so let's fancy. do a little bit of orange zest in here. A little orange zest. It's yeah. different. I love this. We got just a little bit right of zest, away. Mm, right? It smells so good. You probably can add a little bit of add a little juice. or something in there as mm, well. That would be know. nice. Be <laughs> booze in there. I mean, I'm always uh, open for suggestions. <laughs> That's the Lionel <laughs> style. All right. Oh, it smells that really, smells good, really huh? good. Yeah. Yep. So I did put that in there. So I'm going to grab now some of our crumble. Nice. So this is what it'll look like after about 15 minutes. So just nice, Oof. lightly golden, right? So what I'm going to do is add our pistachios to it now. Just mix those in a little bit. And I'm just going to sprinkle right on the top. And nuts, you know, they're is, really actually. nutrient dense. They got lots of good protein, lots of good fats. So they're going to keep you full. They're also really crunchy, taste really good. It looks very pretty. I it like it. pretty, right? I like it. Simple, but clean and exactly. pure. Exactly. And this mixture like, too, you, <laughs> <and pure. laughs> you, you wish. <laughs> so this mixture too, we can make this in a big batch, just like we did our rhubarb mixture. And this you could keep in the fridge in a jar. Would you like to give it a try? I would love to give it a try. <laughs> Kidding me? I didn't have breakfast. I might have to well, steal from you though. Come to Papa. <laughs> it's good. It's really good. This is good. I love that. That's nice breakfast. I really like the orange. almost forgot it, but it's an essential step. It is. Really yummy. <laughs> okay, let's take a quick break. When we come back, I'm going to show you how to roast the chicken. We're also going to make some potato, sweet potato fries. We are. So don't go anywhere. You are on Healthy and Delicious. We'll be right back. A new episode will be posted every Tuesday and Thursday. So don't forget to subscribe right below or visit us website at www.hgcooking.tv.